All right. Well, how about that? I'm, I'm so pleased you're all here. This is fantastic. Uh, we're going to get started. Uh, thank you for coming to my uh, album release show for my first full-length original composition album entitled Slow Motion Departure. Uh, wow. Uh, how's everybody doing? Thank you for coming. Uh, I see a lot of friendly faces. They're all friendly faces. This is great. And, uh, um, there's a lot of people I've known a long time here. That's, it's so great to see you all here. It's special for me to be able to share this evening with you. Um, so, just to give you a little uh, insight into what we're doing here. Uh, this, this album is sort of an abstract uh, musical rendering of my emotional states since leaving my home uh, state of New Jersey over 20 years ago. Um, it was about, it wasn't until I was 29 that I, I really uh, started creating my own life, I would say, as an adult, and moving out here to Seattle to start my life over as a uh, musician, as an artist, and a music student. Okay, so I've had some questions about the title. Uh, so the title, it works on two levels for me. On one level, it's sort of a, a metaphor for growing old. Um, sort of that we're all on this slow moving journey from life until death. And no, the, not so slow. No. <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective. Um, yeah, with the final departure being the course. Um, but on another level, on a more personal level, uh, the, the show, the, the, uh, the album is about uh, my late start in life. Um, I was a late bloomer in almost every sense of the word. Um, I graduated from high school uh, barely knowing myself at all. Uh, I found myself unable to handle the emotional or practical demands of adulthood. Um, my parents, although good people and meaning well, knew very little about child rearing. Uh, and I, as a result, I grew up without the self-awareness, self-confidence, or personal direction that uh, are really crucial for success in life. Okay, so as a result, um, I, when I graduated from high school, I, I was lost. I was overwhelmed by life, paralyzed by fear, uh, afraid to make decisions. Uh, I ended up misspending um, nearly all of my 20s, uh, dropping out of college twice, um, having a fair number of toxic relationships, trying to escape life with various addictions, and uh, just a real fantastic notion of how my life should turn out. Uh, I grew up in Trenton, New Jersey, for those of you who have not been there. Um, Trenton is a uh, burnt out small industrial city that uh, saw its heyday at the turn of the 20th century with the Industrial Revolution. Uh, I seriously doubt it would exist today were it not for the fact that it's the capital of the state and that brings a fair number of government positions to the, to the area. Uh, growing up in the 70s and 80s, especially before the internet, there was a, a real sense of hopelessness and isolation in Trenton. Uh, Trenton is pretty working class. Uh, the, the overwhelming majority of people there feel that getting by is just about all you can hope for out of life. And uh, people end up settling for careers and life paths that they don't really enjoy and don't really care about and they accept survival as pretty much a fact of life. 
Okay, so where am I going all this except for to give you the most depressing concert you've ever, ever witnessed? I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Uh, so generally, my experience is that people just don't change until the pain of changing is less than the pain of uh, remaining the same. And I, I'm no exception. Uh, by the end of my 20s, I had hit a bottom, and I was desperate for change. I felt I had nothing to lose. I had a friend who moved out here from college. And uh, that's when I decided to uh, take, a leap, take a leap of faith and move out to Seattle to start my life over. So this first track uh, is the beginning of the departure. This is the title track from the album. And it, this is my sort of my musical impression of uh, what it took to 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 leave, and what it felt like to take that leap of faith. This is a slow motion departure.
piece is um, called What I Saw. The first time I took a drive across the country, I'd never been west of the Mississippi until I was 24, about that. Um, I had a friend from the Berkeley College of Music named Jack. He lived in Eugene, Oregon. And uh, I had just dropped out of Berkeley the year before. And uh, so we kept in touch. Um, but I was seriously regretting my decision to drop out of Berkeley. And uh, at the time, I was pretty resentful and angry at my dad because uh, he made it very clear to me that he thought I was a loser and that he would not be supporting any of my efforts to go to school anymore. So uh, they took a two-week vacation to Hawaii that year, and I decided to take, <laughs> take advantage of it by stealing their car and uh, driving to Eugene to visit my friend Jack. So along the way, uh, I did a whole lot of sightseeing, visiting national parks, all kinds of stuff, and uh, on the way back as well. That road trip changed my life. Uh, I was blown away. I, 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 you know, you, you see pictures, you read about it in books, but until you're actually there, you don't, you just don't know how big it really is. Uh, I, I was really taken by the wide open expanses, the uh, the nature, the mountains. But more than anything, the, the feeling of just endless possibilities, that life was so big you could never exhaust all the possibilities. So this next piece is about, it's sort of the impression that road trip had on me.
you. Hey. Well, this is a good time for me to introduce the band. Uh, how about this band? They're fantastic. This is Rachel Contour. <laughs> Rachel and I met in Cornish. Uh, she was like the only bass player there that really enjoyed playing with me. So. <laughs> and this is Gannon Fitzgerald. Uh, Dan and I play together in a cover band, uh, the Sonic Funk Orchestra. It's a 12-piece, 70s funk disco era tribute, and uh, we've known each other quite a while now. Okay, uh, during my first attempt at college, uh, I went to Rutgers University, and I lived in a dorm, and I lived across the hall from a very gifted singer-songwriter. His name was Dan Rodriguez. And uh, Dan wrote uh, acoustic guitar-driven uh, pop songs, kind of like Simon and Garfunkel, with really emotional lyrics. One of my favorites of his was a really sad song called A Heart Is Only Broken Once. And at the time, I, I really didn't understand the sentiment, and I, frankly, I thought it was nonsense. But uh, <laughs> later on in life, I, 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 I came to believe that there might be some truth to it. Uh, what I'm getting at is, even though we can and do end up healing from failed attempts at love, there is a certain innocence that's lost with that very first heartbreak. And you're changed forever. You're never really quite the same. E even though you move on and fall in love again, you, there's something about you that's not quite right. <laughs> All right, I'll leave it right there.
capture that feeling and maybe uh, work work through it a little bit with the music a little therapy with the music it's called regret Thank you. 
separate dimension from us. Much in the same way that width, depth, and height exist for us. So in other words, the future, the past, the present may coexist simultaneously. It's just that our consciousness is only built to see it one slice at a time. Okay, so sometimes I look at old photographs of myself and for an instant, I, I think I can imagine this concept is true. I know. He's refilling. So, like, if I look at an old photo of myself, it's like for a, the briefest window, I can feel a connection from the present moment I'm in to the instant the photo was taken. And it's like, it's just, just for a split second, it's like both are equally real and somehow they're connected. But then, of course, it's, as soon as that realization comes, it, it goes away real quick. And then, uh, then it's just a picture again. <laughs> so this song is called Faded Photographs.
you. By the time I had uh, lived in, in Seattle a couple of years, and I finished a couple of years at Cornish, um, my relationship with my father started to come around. Um, it was getting a little healthier and a little more adult. I think he could see I had found some direction and that maybe me moving out here was just not another wild escape. Uh, I was starting to feel more stable and stronger and that gave me just enough breathing room to consider trying again, starting over with him. Uh, so we, for the first time in a long, long time, we started to have friendly interactions. And uh, this next piece, is about that transformation, the, the art, the transformation of our relationship from uh, something dark to something a little lighter. This is called reconciliation.
All right. We're officially at halftime. We're going to make a little quick changeover, and I'm going to present some different material. Okay. Um, so I, I can't tell you how uh, blessed I, I, I feel to have this group of musicians with me. They are far more professional than I am. Uh, but anyway, on, on cello, Eli Weinberger. <laughs> Kelly Moore on viola, viola. And Rachel Nesbig on violin. Um, okay, so my first exposure to classical music was probably uh, Fear Elise by Beethoven at age eight, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, that didn't have a big impact on me, honestly. Uh, it wasn't until later that my piano teacher introduced me to the Bach two and three part inventions that I became more interested in piano literature for classical piano literature. Uh, yeah, even though they were technically challenging, uh, they weren't like any piece of music that I played before. Uh, there was not a melody in the right hand and some sort of rhythmic chordal accompaniment in the left hand. Instead, there were multiple melodic threads all weaving together into a tapestry of sound. So, uh, when I got the chance to take counterpoint at Cornish with Bern Herbelsheimer, uh, I, I knew I had to sign up even though I wasn't in the classical department. They let me take the class anyway. Anyway, the, the final exam project for this class was to compose two three-voice fugues, which is what we're going to perform for you right now. The first one is in G minor, and the second one is in A major. Uh, and just to give you a little rundown of how I'm presenting this so that it's easier for everyone to hear what's going on, I'm going to play all three voices on the piano first. Then we're going to go back to the top and I'm going to play the top voice while Eli and Kelly play the bottom two voices. And then we're going to go back to the top <laughs> and I'm going to play the top voice. No, we already did that. <laughs> then <laughs> Rachel's going to play the top voice and I'm gonna play the bottom two voices, and then I'm gonna sit out, and you can enjoy how it sounds with three strings. Okay, any questions? <laughs>
Kathleen. Once again, Eli Weinberger, Astro, Kelly Moore on viola, viola and Rachel Estate on the violin. Thank you. We're going to switch back to the old format in a second here. All right. It's going to get cheerier now. I promise. Um, summers at Cornish were a pretty lonely time. I spent my first two years uh, at Cornish and during the summer just working in restaurants as a server, um, trying to save as much money as I could for the next two years, or for the next school year. Uh, during the school year, I worked part-time as a server. There was a ton of coursework and not to mention a lot of practice. Rachel and probably Stephanie are the maybe the only two friends I made at Cornish. Uh, there just wasn't a lot of time for that. So as a result, during my junior year, I decided I was going to go home for the summer. I missed uh, New Jersey summers. Uh, I missed my friends. So I drove back to New Jersey uh, this junior year, and I worked with my dad doing landscaping outside, and uh, I helped my friend Marty do gigs down the shore. And that was a really good time that summer. That was the first time I think I was really able to enjoy being in New Jersey, just forget about the past, and you know, enjoy being home. So this, this piece is called Coming Home. Mm -hmm.
when I finally finished my uh, senior recital, 2005, uh, I got my degree and I felt a stupendous weight lift off my shoulder. Finally got the monkey off my back. Stop beating myself up. Stop feeling like a failure. About this time, uh, I had started my piano teaching business, and there's a fair amount of students here. And that was going really well. And I, I felt redeemed. And that's what this song is about. It's called Redemption. And just incidentally, this is the most streamed song on the internet. Uh, but I really do.
I'm taking a pause for the calls here. So the, the, the general outline of the story is that my life is getting better. Uh, and I'd just like to say that um, my life ends up in a good place. And this, this whole program, if, if, if the arc of this story is about how uh, I changed my way of being from, where I, from the way I was when I grew up, it's, it's mostly due to my wife, Carrie. I, oh, yeah. I love her very much. And <laughs> seriously, absolutely none of this would be happening without her support and love. Uh, I, I, I would never have the time or the money to record this album, to have this show, none of it. <laughs> would never happen. So, um, thank you. Okay. This next song is called Carefree Days. <laughs> uh, to my surprise, after college, I was actually able to support myself teaching piano lessons. I, I was living in my own apartment. I was gigging in local bands. Life was pretty good. Uh, I felt a real sense of accomplishment and freedom, probably for the first time ever. And that's why I call those the Carefree Days.
right, last piece. So eventually to grow, I think you need to own up to your mistakes. Forgive yourself, that's important, and move on. Otherwise you stay stuck. Uh, the same thing goes for others. Uh, if you hanging on to resentment and anger, it just holds you back. So this last piece was originally composed for a film, and it was a totally different style. Uh, but for the purposes of this album and this concert, I decided to make it into a bossa nova. And the reason for that is the bossa nova, in my opinion, is the most breezy, the most relaxed, the sunniest music there is, and there's no, there's not a trace of anger or resentment in it. So this is called With Time Forgiveness. Thank you. 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 Thank you.